Hello guys, welcome to the Lindy Vanner channel again. This video is not about van life, it is about bike life, and in particular the Carrera Titan X full suspension mountain bike. I'm gonna give you a bit of a review, so stay tuned and watch right until the end. Yes, welcome to the video guys. Please, 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 first, if you can just hit that red button below, hit subscribe, that really helps us out. We know you're gonna enjoy this video, especially if you're in the market for a very reasonable entry-level full suspension mountain bike. Click that red button, thanks a bunch. Okay guys, uh, welcome to you all. Uh, I've brought you all to one of my favorite places from my childhood, actually. This is Holmesley Campsite. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's not in service and all the buildings are boarded up but the campsite itself is left open so the horses can roam free uh, within the campsite and I guess to uh, keep the grass trimmed. So welcome here. I'm here with my Carrera Titan X full suspension mountain bike that I bought uh, from Halfords. Now I know a lot of people aren't fans of uh, Carreras or Halfords, uh, they sort of go hand in hand but I wanted to give this bike a shot. It seemed to have a lot going for it for the price point uh, and I paid £720 for it. It's got RockShox suspension front and rear. It's got Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes, 180mm on the front, 160mm rotor on the back. It's a 12 by one gearing and it's got SRAM SX transmission. It's also got a dropper post which is one of the sort of fringe benefits of this bike. The handlebars are very wide. They're, I think, 780 mil wide, which is fantastic. And this is as the bike comes. I've made two modifications to the bike so far. One being the mud flap. So I just pinched this mud flap off an old bike that we had in the garage. The front one is just a Coke bottle that I cut up, uh, got the template offline. And the only other modification that I've done is add a phone holder if you can call it a modification. My overall impression of the bike when I got it was good. I actually built the bike and um, somewhere up here you should be able to find a link to uh, my unboxing video and building of the bike. I built the bike, it was very simple to build. The brakes were already set up, the chain was already on, the gears were already set up. Uh, all I had to do was stick the handlebars on, put the seat post in and stick the front wheel on and then I was ready to go really. I've now been on, I think, four or five reasonable cycles of around 20 to 40 kilometers, of which I'm doing one of them today because I had to cycle to the forest to get here to do this review. And um, the bike has performed fantastically. I've been using it about 50% off-road, 50% on-road, which I know isn't amazing. I wish I could be off-road more, doing a bit more cross-country, but simply to get here, to the new forest you have to cycle on the road for a little bit from where I come from in Christchurch. So the bike I knew had to serve this purpose that I knew I was going to have to cycle on the road to get where I wanted to go. So this is one of the main reasons why I got this particular full suspension Carrera Titan X. There were two levels of Carrera Titan X that Halfords do. One with the SR Suntour suspension and one with the RockShox. It was a no-brainer for me. I think there are a couple of other benefits to getting this, this particular spec, um, but I can't remember what they are offhand. I didn't even really look at the one with the SR Suntour suspension. These RockShox, you can lock them out, uh, which is fantastic for riding on the road. I mean, to get up to the forest here is a bit of an uphill slog, so I needed to make sure that my suspension could lock out. It does that fantastically. I am six foot tall, exactly, and I weigh about 100 and just under 120 kilos, uh, which is about 18 and a half stone, I think. And the suspension on this is more than capable enough to take the pressure required for my weight. Maximum pressure allowable in the rear shock is 275 PSI, and I think it's about 250 ish in the front, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't even pumped up the shocks to the maximum. One note, get yourself a shock pump if you're gonna get uh, air suspension in your bike, because then you can tweak the sag uh, to your method. I will do a video on how to set your sag. Click up here if you want to see that video. So the bike itself is very comfortable to ride, both on-road and off-road. 
I've taken it off-road here in uh, the New Forest doing a bit of cross-country riding. And I even found a little bit of single track, but I'm not that confident on the bike yet. I'm getting back into biking myself. I used to cycle around these woods as a kid. I've not been cycling much in the last sort of 10 years. So when I was looking to buy a new bike, there was so much out there on the market that I didn't know about. One thing being the dropper post, which is an amazing feature. I can't believe that it's only been around for the last few years, but a fantastic feature, which means that you can have it up when you're cycling on the road and uh, you really want to get the, and cover those miles. And when you get off-road and you want to descend and get your weight over the back of the bike, pull the lever, your own body weight will push the seat down and then let go of the lever and then the saddle's low. Fantastic feature. The grips that come on the bike, they're not fantastic. I mean, they're super cheap grips, but they're actually remarkably comfortable. I just had one complaint regarding that, regarding the grips, and that was that my hands were getting very sweaty. I've just bought myself a pair of gloves. It sorted it out, no problem. I will replace them. I'll get some lock-on grips eventually, but I'm gonna use these up first because there's nothing wrong with them. They're very comfortable and they're a good size for my hand. As for the cockpit setup, my brake levers are two finger brake levers. I'd prefer one finger brake levers, but for the time being, I've just moved in my brake levers so that I only get that sort of one finger on the, on the brake lever and it leaves my other six fingers to hold firmly grip on the bike. I only need one finger. These hydraulic brakes are more than good enough. It's when you had your old bikes with the old V brakes and what have you, then you might have needed two fingers, but yeah, one finger is more than sufficient. This is not a downhill bike. This is a cross country bike, some sort of entry level mountain bike, full suspension mountain bike for somebody that wants to get into biking, somebody that wants to get back into biking like myself. It's not a high-end bike by any means, but it's got some good starter parts on it. So this is why I went for the bike especially at the price point, £720 with the British Cycling Discount. It was a bit of a no-brainer. I'm probably going to upgrade some things on the bike. Um, I've already ordered some new pedals. The pedals that come on this bike, they're fine to get you going, but very easily they start to get a bit slippery. I'm only wearing Vans to cycle, and these pedals combined with my Vans, especially in the wet, my feet are all over the place. They are a, a flat style pedal, typical of mountain bikes these days but still they're just not up to scratch. I've ordered some DMR V8 pedals. If you wanna see the review of those, then click in this video here. Also, I've ordered some new shoes. I've ordered some Adidas 510 shoes. Hopefully the combination of them and the DMR pedals will really keep my feet glued to the pedals. Other upgrades that I'd like to do the, to the bike are mainly my seat. And as I said, I've already got gloves. That was an important one for uh, riding both in the wet for me and uh, the sweat on my hands making the grips slippery. The three contact points on the bike are obviously your pedals, your seat, and your handlebars. So um, if those three, three things are good, then the rest can kind of wait a little while. I've got some friends approaching and I'm, no, it's okay, they're going in the other direction. The bike's got good spec tires, the WTB Trail Boss tires, they're 2.25 wide. The wheels are 27.5 inches, which was a bit new for me. I was used to riding a 26 inch beforehand when I used to be riding a lot, but they actually feel a bit more stable. The geometry of the whole bike feels more stable than I'm used to uh, from back then. But I think maybe, maybe the slightly bigger wheels than I'm used to uh, contribute to that. Um, I'm gonna be using this for going on the trails, um, maybe a bit single track, no downhill. It's not a downhill bike, let's be honest but mainly, mainly cross-country riding. I think that's sort of what it's aimed at, sort of your leisurely cross-country rider um, that has easy access to the outdoors like I do here. Do I have any complaints about the bike? Not really. Um, it's exactly what I expected, uh, if I'm honest. Um, I'm very pleased with it. It's not really exceeded my expectations, I would say, but it's certainly not let me down. When I used to ride when I was in my late teens, early 20s, um, I used to ride a hardtail GT. Uh, it was a GT Moto. It was a good spec for the period. It had Hope hubs, Mavic rims, Hope brakes, bomber shocks on the front. Uh, as I say, it was a hardtail. It had Shimano Saint cranks. It was a really good spec bike for the era. And still today I miss that bike. But when I was tossing up between whether to get another hardtail or a full suspension, when I saw this one for the price point, I thought I'd give it a go. You can't really go wrong. Surely the parts on it alone are worth sort of 500 quid. 
If you want to see my reasoning for getting the full suspension over perhaps a slightly higher spec hardtail bike, then uh, see this video here. If you guys have any questions about the bike and you would like me to address them in either another video or just in the comments, hit up the comments below and uh, I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thanks very much for watching the video guys. I hope it's been interesting. Please like, subscribe, share this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Over and out.